So there's at least one thing which I will always try to do, and that's if I have nothing to say about Star Citizen because we're in between patches or something like that, I will always try to bring you content, something interesting to talk about. Hello YouTubers, this is Anubafar. Today I'm going to do an overview of Warhammer 40k Dark Tide. The game was gifted to me by a friend and orgmate. The game is exactly tailored to the game type that I personally like. Let me talk about this fantastic release to see if it may also be tailored exactly to your game type and if it's something that you might like to play. Let's begin. At the time of this video, I have about 44 hours of play and I've been able to level cap my veteran sharpshooter all the way to level 30 and I have basically legendary gear. I feel now that I have enough time to actually render a verdict. The game is quite popular and has a very strong fan base despite releasing in 2022. Right at the start, I'm going to say that this multiplayer boss horde shooter works very well and could actually be set in any type of universe. And that's good news because that means it's a fantastic game. This game would work in the Aliens universe, it would work part of the Doom franchise, and I don't say this to do it any type of injustice. The point was that this is a great game with complex mechanics that's also very easy to pick up. I knew nothing about Warhammer and its universe when starting to play this game and it never hurt my enjoyment of the game. Warhammer is likely to be seen as the largest, widest and oldest universe, dating all the way back to 1983 and even before, its universe was the basis for a tabletop miniature war game. Heroic miniatures are painted, heroic miniatures are placed as one of two or more opposing armies, there are rules, there are die and there's combat. Combat can be on your dining room table, but there are conventions and some people take this very seriously, converting their entire house to support this habit. Let's call it a habit. With the need for more stories, the universe expanded and the lore expanded with it. Warhammer 40k is set in the distant future. Humanity has been at war against monsters, orcs, elves, demons, aliens, and mutants. There's magic and powers. The entirety of the society can be seen as a religion or cult. The ruler, the emperor of mankind, is seen as a god. The weapons are seen as religious icons. The missions are treated like some kind of biblical crusade. Humanity's been knocked down and beat down over thousands of years, and now it's down to survival. Specific to this game, all characters begin as a prisoner who are offered the choice to die in prison or fight for the emperor. It's those of us working for the god, against them, the hordes and lost heretics. Mankind is done trying to restore the way it was, and mankind is removing the infestation by force. It's dark, it's bleak, and it's mature. The banter between the characters is awesome, the mission briefings are scripted and voiced perfectly in tune with the lore, the soundtrack pumps you up to get you ready to fight. The voice acting from your mission commanders helps seal the deal, as they only care about results. There is no failure because the failure is the death of the Empire. I would say that the developers of the game were lucky to have such a complete lore to draw upon and I feel that they really seized that opportunity and achieved maximum effect. There are four classes and you don't have to worry too much at the beginning because your first will have plenty of opportunity to make others in the future. The weapons that you choose change the gameplay and how you must strategize. Each character has only two slots, a melee and a weapon slot. There are three slots for curios, which are religious objects that are provided, you guessed it, by the Emperor. Your weapon is also provided by the Emperor. They are magical, consecrated, blessed and also religious artifacts. The veteran sharpshooter is your sniper with range. They require ammo or they die. One or two of them on the team is ideal because they can't tank damage very well. And despite having that melee weapon at the ready, they become overwhelmed quite quickly. The sharpshooter has a perk which deals a massive critical damage on well-placed shots. When your perk is active, the outline of the boss is highlighted and this is a little bit like a spider sense, which can be used to quickly pacify an open space of very high damage enemies. If played correctly, the sharpshooter can kill these bosses before they have a chance to ruin your team. The Ogren is a 14 foot tall, 700 pound humanoid. This is the tank class who can run into and through hordes. They remain in close combat with the bosses trading blows. They can wield huge bats and also huge guns. Their abilities allow them to take massive hits and keep going and their large hitbox also means that they can shield their team from damage. Bull Rush is the main ability in this class and allows them to charge headfirst into hordes of enemies the ability also knocks enemies over, allowing for a brief moment to think. A good Ogren knows when to rush or when to back out. It's super to have an Ogren on the team, but they're not just set and forget. The team has to do its part to deal with ranged enemies such as snipers or gunners. If you see an Ogren go down, the team must make restoring that as their top priority. 
The Preacher is more rounded and better in close ranges. They can charge in or out of combat with a rush perk. They are effective with guns and play more like a soldier than a sniper. They can stun larger groups of enemies, allowing your team to focus damage and work together. The Psyker is basically a space combat wizard. Like the Sharpshooter, they're fine when dealing with hordes, but not for too long. Early on they rely on guns, but as they level up the staves and force swords, you literally disintegrate the enemies with the power of your mind or force push them like a Jedi. This skill is super against bosses and elites, providing that you charge your shot. Psychers can lock onto an enemy from a distance and are very effective with snipers, even if they're behind cover. Overuse this skill and you yourself explode, becoming a casualty. You cannot play this game solo. There is no single player campaign except for the tutorial missions. The game is designed to be played as a team of four. It's best if that team is made up of people on your own friends list. This lets you decide what the makeup and composition of your team is. Trust me, taking three shooters and a preacher into any mission is difficult at best. I think that aspect is great, but grinding for gear allows you to take on more difficult missions. There is the main hall with shops and specialists to help you with your gear. The central part has a mission board. Once you've assembled your team, you choose your mission. Assassination, disruption, espionage, investigation, raid, repair, strike. These are the types. They're rated from 1 to 5. They have modifiers such as blackout mode, more hounds, high activity, low activity. If your team is made up mostly of level 10, perhaps high activity level 1 or 2 would be suitable. If you have some 10s and let's say a level 30 Ogren or Psyker, it might be fine to take a low activity level 3. And this is the best and worst part of the game. You have many missions to try and each have unique objectives. But despite the beautifully crafted maps, each with lots to look at, the combat becomes mostly the same. You advance to a new place, you hear a horde, you deal with them. You advance, you hear a boss, you deal with it. You advance, there are things that you need to scan, turn in, or repair, and then you deal with it, and then you advance. You do this until the end where you're paid. Your XP goes up, your gear gets better, and you can try even harder missions. The game is better with friends because randos typically don't care if you need ammo. They will come to your rescue when you're down, but only because they actually need you to finish. They can't take on a horde by themselves, but your team of friends works better and your achievement is collective. So, did I give you the entire story in this review? No. Did I give you a complete understanding of Warhammer 40k? No. Is it for you? Probably. It's very likely that you will enjoy this game a lot if you like Fallout, Skyrim, especially if you like a game like Borderlands. Its missions take about 30 minutes to complete, which gives everyone time for a break before the next match. Sometimes you may only have one or two friends on your team and the system will pair you up with randos. This works fine, but it's not as much fun as when you're playing with your orc mates. I play this and I stream it live over on Nubifier 2. Please support me by subscribing to that second channel and you'll know when I'm streaming if you activate the alert icon. Thank you very much for spending your time with me. Join up with Enemy Contact if you want someone to play with. Swift death to the heretics and glory to all of mankind. Sorry, Chief. You're good. Hold up, those heretic. Medic station. No more razor. Pilgrims, a down. Come 
Tracker. Oh, Rip up and get your backs on a wall. Yep, that's what I'm doing. That's exactly what I was trying to do. If you can res, I can stun on top of them. Don't you dare leave me! He's on! He's... Get the hound of our shaker! Smorch is back there. I got, uh, 400. It's you, right? Good. No way back from here! 719 now. I'm at full grenade.
No, you get to it before I did. You let me know when you want Show me that ugly grin. Either of them can carry it. Okay. I got it. Nice. Because I'm still at 300, I don't think it's necessary. It's been a while since the enforcers were about to take it. There's been no law down here for a long time. Only can't help justice. Such failure is unforgivable! Well, that's just sad. <laughs> All right, come to the wall with me. I went down quick. Four hundred plus deal too. Very, very nice. That's awesome. Nice. I just got a four on my last gun. Ooh. I got a three forty eight uh Dragon's Claw. 